I mean, sometimes you just don't, you don't think of him like that. You don't think of Jesus could ever be tempted. That dawned on me one day, and he was tempted. That's almost, I can't hardly conceive that. I can't, I can't hardly even, I can't hardly be even believe it now. But it is true. So he was tempted of the devil, and when he was, he said, it is written, and this, is, this is, was his response, it is written, that man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, the devil was tempting him because he was hungry. He said, if you're the son of God, c command these stones be made bread. And he said, it is written, as hungry as I am. The thought of it probably made his uh, mouth begin to water. If you hadn't eaten in 40 days... The mention of food, just thinking about it, you, you, it would be almost uh, unbearable, almost. But he said, we, can, we, we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <laughs> Praise God. And, and he resisted the devil, so he was tempted. So he didn't walk by faith, I mean by sight. I don't believe he walked beside a day of his life here on this earth, but he walked by faith. And here's what we want to talk about this morning, Mark chapter 11 and uh, verse 20. We're going to start at verse 22. Again, it's a very familiar scripture, but now listen. There's a reason why that things sometimes aren't going right in your life. There's a reason why things won't change in your life. And there is a reason why, if you're not blessed, there, there's a reason why that you're not. Right. Amen. There's always a reason. Sometimes we may not understand it. Sometimes we may not ever understand it. But in some areas, it's very plain why the things aren't going like you want them to go. Now, Jesus, verse 22, and Jesus answered, saying unto them, we don't want to go into story, but it's about the fig tree, and Jesus cursed the fig tree and so forth. They seen the next morning it was dried up. And Peter reminded the Lord of it, said, look, it's, it's withered away. He cursed it. He withered away by the next morning. Jesus answered and said to them, said, have faith in God. And I believe the literal translation of that is have the faith of God. See, sometimes translators don't have enough guts to translate the way it's supposed to be. They let their own thoughts and stuff get in the way. But that's all right. They said, have faith in God. Now, verse 23, Jesus said, for verily, let's stop right here for just a minute. If Jesus said something, can we believe it? If somebody says, I, I don't, we don't, well, most times people say, we don't believe that. Well, if Jesus said it, who's right? You or Jesus? Who is right? It's pretty simple. See, we, we've complicated this thing. You know, uh, religion's complicated it. Church doctrine a lot of times has complicated it. But if Jesus said it, I can believe it. And you'll do well to believe it too. You'll do well to believe it too. Now, he said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever, whosoever, now who is whosoever? Was that just his disciples that, that was following them, him that day? That's according to, to one preacher that gave me a tape years ago. That's what he was saying. He went through, I was amazed to hear him. I, he went through all the scriptures that was powerful and life-giving. Yeah. He said, all oh, them's just for the disciples. He said, that's passed away, you know. All that's passed away with the apostles and so forth. And I thought to myself, You've come a little too late to tell me that. You, you know, it was, it was supposed to have, have uh, had an effect. That's what the enemy wanted. But he come too late because I'd already got a taste of the Word of God and how powerful and how true it was. And I began to think about it. And, and here Jesus said, he didn't say, now I'm talking to you disciples. No, he said, verily I say unto you. Now that was the disciples. That whosoever, 
Boy, it's amazing how that the devil's crowd can't see these little old things that Jesus made so simple. They're so, sim they're so simple that you couldn't misunderstand them. But you know, they can't, even their educated minds can't see those things. You know why? Because they're only revealed to us by the Spirit. They're hid to those that, that don't believe. God, God made it that way. It's something in here. It's something in here. It's the only way that you can see the true word of God. You can't be educated enough to see it. Now, a lot of worldly people think that's it. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's been there and done this, and he has enough degrees you could call him Fahrenheit. But he don't know anything. He not received anything from God. The only thing he's received is a puffed up mind, a bunch of knowledge. And there's no deliverance in that. Jesus didn't teach like that. Do you notice that? He never taught like that. He's teaching right here. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain.